Service virtualization on demand. Uh, create request response pairs directly into a deployed virtual service. So using CA TDM, we can generate request response pairs based on the specification of the WSDL uh, or the JSON request or XML, etc. We could also sample the message data, um, which is very useful, and we can maybe do some analysis on that as well. So um, but we start by taking your WSDL or your XML. Um, and we would register that into the DataMaker engine. We would then also maybe import some message traffic as well, because that can be quite useful and has lots of sort of uh, uses from ability to sort of analyze, you know, the traffic that's flowing through a system. Out of that, we can then create these request response pairs, which are then pushed directly into the uh, SV product. Now, in addition to that, we've also got some other cleverness, which we can uh, bring to the party. Now, Agile Designer, um, that could create you sets of covered responses. So by that, I mean, you know, each response would be a different shape. Now that's, you know, I, I use the term snowflake. Um, you know, each one is a different, um, you know, might have a different uh, number of elements or combinations of elements or combinations of data that you actually want to put out. So maybe you create a couple of thousand uh, request responses so that you have a very nice covered set of data for testers without, having, without them having to actually sort of specifically request um, a specific request response pair. In addition to that, we can throw the data, data viz tool, which is very powerful, to look at the traffic to help you kind of model and understand the data that is flowing uh, in through, uh, through your messages. So that's actually quite a powerful tool in terms of sort of understanding, you know, almost paying off the technical debt of the messages that are flowing through and helping you um, create, um, you know, uh, messages that are similar to that, but maybe better. The idea is to kind of improve on the on the coverage as the messages flow through. And then finally, SV on demand, which is this concept of being able to just create um, a portal, which can be called from Rally or can be called from you know HP um, or just from any web browser, which allows you to request specific request response pairs on demand. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is take you through a sort of step-by-step -step guide of each uh, of the steps associated uh, with SV on demand. So firstly, we're going to start with uh, a WSDL in this case. We're going to use a SOAP message, uh, which I have the definition sitting here. Now, a WSDL is a fairly technical animal, uh, but sitting inside it are various operations that um, the SOAP request can uh, request and respond to. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at this one here, which is decode with Lang. Now, what we're going to use is uh, we've got um, the Javelin engine uh, is the thing that kind of does the sort of orchestration of this. Now, it's a very powerful engine in, um, inside DataMaker, a full workflow engine. And you'll see here there are lots and lots of um, actions uh, here that, and a little node called XML Shredder. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create a project and I'm actually going to come in and shred uh, uh, the schema. to. Um, and, and what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to create a mini little database which mirrors the complex structure of the WSDL. Now, this is kind of the plumbing sitting behind it. Uh, in effect, all you'd have to do is to execute this. So what I'm going to do is execute shred WSDL. And what will happen is you'll be popped up with a, a set of uh, variables or parameters that you need to uh, run in. What I'm going to do is I've just got this set up already. Otherwise, you just overwrite these values here. Actually, this is the name of the actual WSDL we're going to be uh, shredding. And here's the name of the operation. And you click on Execute. And Javelin will be invoked in the background. You don't really need to worry about this. And this is going to go off and it's going to create us uh, a little mini. In this case, it's a SQL Server database in the background. OK, so that's finished. Uh, now, what's it actually done? So if, I'm just going to go into Let's go and look at our connect to our SQL Server database. And what you'll see here is we've actually created a little schema called VIN decode. And you'll see here that we've created a set of tables associated with the request response. Um, and we've also created some of the relationships between them, like so. So that's kind of uh, what's happened in the background. Now, what we would do now is we would then go in. Now, what I've done is I've actually created a little separate project uh, inside the DataMaker engine. Um, just to kind of show you, uh, the first thing you would do is you need to register the table. So we need to understand the WSDL. Um, and what we would do is go and find our VIN decode, come in and just do a standard data maker register. Uh, 
and now if we go to look for actions for registered objects what I'm going to just quickly do is show you these in the diagrammer so you kind of understand what's actually going on in the background so if we open the tables in GT diagrammer so what you'll see here um, in effect uh, is the structure of the WSDL itself so if we just move around a little bit what you'll do is you'll see this is our response and over here we've got our request envelope um, and as you would expect you know it's very much kind of a one-to-many as you go down into um, let's have a look see what we've got going on here so we've got some report information coming back, back from the VIN uh, and then we've got various other paired values names and values which would be hanging off the main response uh, and then if we take a look at the request uh, you'll see in here that we're looking for the VIN number, the report type, and the language that we're interested in getting the response back. So we've we've done a pretty good job here of kind of chopping up that structure. So let's go back over to DataMaker. Now, once you've got this, you've now got to, in effect, create a, um, a data generation engine for it. Now, the way that DataMaker works, it's got some very powerful accelerators. If I come in here and click on Edit Data, um, it'll say select tables and use standard rules to create data. So what I'm going to do here is just go in choose my quest responses do you want to create them yes i do um, and we're going to use xml rules so we're going to use an internal sequence number and we're going to use a reference to the first published parent so in other words what we're doing is it's a little bit like a molecule we're tying it all together in the data maker engine uh, so you don't you know what we can really focus on now is is actually the data to do with the really interesting bits which is to do let's just sort by column name which is to do with creating all of the transmission types, all the different ty uh, types of data that is associated with this request response pair. Now, I've already created uh, a project to do this, so I'll switch back, switch away from my on demo on demand and go back into here, and I'll just show you uh, what I've done in terms of creating a VIN request response pair. So if we come in here and take a look at decode with language. So what I've done there is, I just go inside and have a quick look at all of the columns you'll see that I've gone through and filled in all the gaps um, I've left the with language stuff out but you'll see there's lots of uh, powerful sort of you know there's a few static values gone in and then I've parameterized up some of the values so that when I actually push these out into my request response I'll be prompted for those values now it's worth taking a little time here what I'm gonna do is just actually do um, a publish so I'm just gonna do publish to data target so you see what's coming up and we're going to put it back to VL decode WL which is where the data came from um, and you'll see here we've got various parameters that I can now adjust when I want to create my request response pair so if we take a look at our make we can actually pick a particular make um, and maybe for a model we will go in and look at the different types of model that are available for that make now Variables are an extremely powerful beast inside uh, Data Maker. And if we look at the variables, so if we look at something like uh, make, if we edit the variable, you'll see we've used the very powerful data painter functions. So here I've created an as list, and in this case I've used a hard coded list just to show you show you that, and that's going to be a pick list. Um, and for this one, uh, which is the model. Now the models actually depend on what type of make you are. So if you look at the variable here, what we've done is we've actually, in the, under these circumstances, we've gone off and actually issued some SQL, which is going to pull in information based on the make that you've created. So you spend a little bit of time parameterizing up using the variables, um, and that in effect creates you this ability to publish request response pairs directly out into uh, the SQL Server database. So what I'm going to do now is actually do a publish directly into the SQL Server database, which is sitting in the background, uh, where it's the schema, which is the LD code WL. And this is a test data engineer doing this. And I'm going to maybe stick with BMW. I'm going to take a model, switch to uh, a five series, and I'm also going to change something in the request. So here for the report type, I'm going to make it a summary. So that's so far so good. Now I'm also, I'm bundling it up and I'm currently working in Sprint 21A. When I finish building all my uh, request response pairs in SQL Server, I'm going to push them all out in one go to uh, the SV engine. So I'm going to click on publish to data target. 
and that has now created the data directly into our SQL Server database. Now the reality is you'd want to actually expose this out to testers and developers so they could do this on their, on their own. So we go into our test data on demand portal. It's going to log in. Again, this could be called from inside Rally or from inside H, uh, HP ALM. Click on login. And you'll get our little test data on demand. And what I've done is created a little SV on demand portal. I'll pop into that. Click on start. Now, what I could do is I could actually uh, group up different types of uh, request response pairs here. There's a three of them that I'm currently working on. But for the moment, we're just going to pick VIN decode. Um, and what you'll see is a little form pop up. And that form, um, in effect, allows, it, based on those very powerful variables, allows people to have pick lists and checklists and drop downs and lookups in databases to request the data that they want. So, under this circumstances, I might pick a Honda and let's look at the models. And it's going to react to the type of models that Honda is available. Um, and then I'm happy with Sprint 21A, maybe petrol, maybe a hybrid. Uh, and what I'm going to do is click on next and submit and what will happen now you click OK and the job will be submitted and then a few minutes later you'll get an email back saying uh, this is the request response pair that you've created um, and if you want to that could actually be directly populated into the SV engine. So here we are in our email system and you'll see we've got a little email come uh, sent back to us um, and within that we've actually got the VIN ID. So this is the VIN ID that the um, the data generation engine has calculated and this is based on combinations of the make, the model, um, the type, uh, the type of body um, and the year. Now what I'm going to do is show you how you'd actually uh, export the, uh, the RL pairs into SV. Now you could set it up so it does automatically whenever you request uh, through the test data on demand portal. But what I'm going to do is just show you how it's done in the background. Now I'm going to pick Sprint 21A because we've grouped up a bunch of um, request response pairs. And you just literally fill in the value, click on the tick. And your Javelin will go off into the background. And what it'll do is it'll actually create you these request response pairs. Okay, so that's done. Now let's go and have a look and see what's happened. So we're in project uh, VL decode WL, and you'll see here we've got some uh, a request uh, which is for this VIN ID, which we've actually uh, synthetically created and reported back to you. And then if we go into our response, you should see in here our BMW 5 series, which um, I think was what we did using uh, the direct uh, publish. And for this one, we should see that's the rear request and then let's have a look in the response we should see the Honda that we requested okay so that's now created uh, a SV on demand portal that allows testers and developers to very quickly request and get the request responses that they need to satisfy the testing that they're working on. Now we're going to move on to some other very nice features. And the first one is to talk about creating covered sets of responses. So from the WSDL, we build a staging database, which you've looked at. Um, we're going to create a logical model of the potential shape of the message and associated data. Uh, then we're going to create uh, the data driven by the Agile Designer coverage techniques. Uh, and then we have a test bed of really rich combinations of test data. And your tester now uh, definitely has the correct virtual responses in order to drive better and more comprehensive testing. So we're going to use Agile Designer. We're actually then going to model it, create lots of uh, nice combinations, and in effect create the SV uh, endpoints in a large group and push them out directly into the SV engine. OK, so this is Agile Designer. And what I've done is I've picked out some of the uh, variables that we're interested in, the make, uh, the engine type, model years, transmissions, etc., just to give me a nice rich spread of data. Uh, and you can see for some of the models we've created uh, uh, makes, we've added attached various different models, Buicks and this BMWs and Fords. Um, and what we've also done is we've used the path hinting to actually um, restrict some of the combinations down. So Buicks, Fords, um, uh, do not allow hybrids and Buicks uh, don't have diesels. Now the result of that is that if we come in and start looking at our combinations, there are 224 potential combinations of data for this particular uh, VIN responder. Um, and if we just come in here and take a look at our test data, now what we're going to do, so this is all the combinations of data, each one of these unique and distinct, what we're going to do now is we're going to export these out to the data maker repository. Um, and here you'll see we've got a thing called covered responses, 
and we're going to drive some publishers. So let's just take a look like so and we'll see here that we've actually come in and created a little pseudo table which has come directly from the Agile Designer tool and each one of these as I said is a distinct and unique snowflake combination. Now what we do is go back to our publish and when we do our publish all we would need to do is to pick it up from in effect the data that was created from the Agile from Agile Designer. So data drive publishes and we're going to pick decode test case unresolved, click on the tick, make sure everything's good, um, all's good, and then we click on publish and that is then going to go off and create our nice sets of combinations of data that we're then going to push out into the SV engine. So here you go, here's our covered set and each one of these would be a distinct and different set of requests and responses and as you flip through you'll see you've got all sorts of different combinations and shapes of data which we'd now push out into the SV engine. So I'm now going to switch back to Agile Designer and show you how you can create uh, linked request responses to your test cases as you design them. So before we actually create a covered set, now this is actually a set of test cases that I've designed and it's to do with risk checking and we have a bunch of different um, journeys or paths through our logical model and that's how we design the test cases. Uh, but what you'll see as we go through is that some of them, for me to get a low credit rating, I'm just using a different whistle, which is to do with uh, risk checking or fraud. Um, and here what we've done is we are setting the various parameters that we need to pass in to our request response pair um, generation engine put a little note, uh, note here just to say it's virtualized um, and what that means is for about four of these test cases we're actually going to create a request response pair. Now all you do is you literally come in and associated with each output you would say I need to make data with credit rating of triple C or a credit rating of A so dependent on which um, journey you're going down you would then set the parameters appropriately um, and then if you actually go in and take a look um, we can actually do it directly from inside Agile Designer so we click on find make and all we do is click on make and that's going to go off and actually create a, a submit to publish directly from inside Agile Designer. And the result of that is that if you come in here and take a look at your test data so in effect we have all of the data that we need in one place um, associated with our test case. So in this case we've looked up a particular credit card and these are the virtual endpoints that you need to match with that credit card to uh, perform this particular test, test case number three in this case. So I'm just going to finish off by showing you around the uh, DataViz tool and this allows you to have a look inside the traffic that's been created. Now this could this is basically the data in the SQL Server database which could be a combination of synthetic data that you've created um, or possibly data that you've imported from real traffic that we've then parsed and put into the tables. So this is the kind of the very shredded down version of the tables and what we've done is I've created a little summary table which is an abstraction of the important information sitting inside there so we don't care about all of the columns in this case we're just maybe interested in about 20 or 30 attributes so all I need to do then is click on the data viz button and we can now get into some serious data mining so we're going to add a graph parallel coordinates is a very good one click on parallel coordinates click create and what we're going to do is maybe look at the make uh, then of course you're always interested in the model, uh, maybe the interest in the engine type and all you're doing is clicking on these various attributes, um, maybe the driveline type and possibly the transmission and then finally maybe the model year to see how we're doing in terms of the model year, not a very good spread there. Um, and what you're seeing is the actual kind of shape of the data. Now you know if you're looking at the sort of um, traffic that you have in the system, maybe I'm just interested in sports cars, what you'll see there, I'll just change the graphing, the brushing so we can see the other data a little more clearly. So what you're seeing is the orange data is the data that we um, actually have in our traffic and then anything else in grey or light grey is actually data that's uh, not relevant to us. So hopefully this you'll see that this is a very very powerful way of using you know visualization to understand the data that you have uh, flowing through maybe your live system, your test system uh, and also the data that is available um, into your tester and developer by use of the SV on demand toolset.